I'm Peter Stoute. I work for Dompay as a consultant uh, on their Escalate platform. And the goal is that the Escalate platform is the best that it can be so that it can support drug discovery efforts, not only for Dompay, but also for all its uh, collaborators. I have worked in the pharmaceutical industry for about 30 years now. And uh, until the beginning of this year, I worked for Galapagos in Belgium. And then I decided to become an independent consultant. And uh, I've been working with artificial intelligence based methods for the past 10 years when the word artificial intelligence didn't even exist. Uh, and my strength is uh, to uh, help the development of predictive models uh, again uh, so that people can uh, develop the best medications possible. The challenges that are faced, there are, there are several. So although people use artificial intelligence methods already for a while, uh, that doesn't mean that all the problems are solved. For example, one thing that's important is that uh, enormous amounts of data are necessary in order to be able to build AI-based models. And uh, that is one of the things that uh, Dompey have realized and uh, are doing. Uh, another challenge is um, that you can consider millions, billions of molecules that you might be able to make, but you have to try to be sure when you start uh, selecting molecules that these molecules have a good chance of being active, not being toxic, uh, that they uh, are in the body long enough to have an effect. And none of these problems have, have been solved. Significant um, strides have been made towards solving the problems, but they're still uh, a topic of very active research. Artificial intelligence has been around for uh, quite a while when people started with so-called artificial neural networks. Uh, and they've been shown to work very well in developing models that can predict properties like activity, toxicity uh, of compounds. And there's every day now it seems like there's new software being made available that can build even better models that can in turn make better predictions on compounds that we haven't synthesized yet and we will only synthesize if we predict that the compounds are going to be good. One of the important things of uh, having models, having predictive models, is that you don't need to do uh, a lot of animal studies. They're still going to be necessary, but for example, one thing that's important is that if you have a tiny byproduct in your uh, sample, in your medication, in the past you would have to synthesize that and it would have to be tested on animals. Now the FDA accepts that models are being used and uh, in order to try to find out whether a compound uh, could be uh, toxic or not. And you can submit that information without having to do specific animal testing uh, in order to find that out. Um, also, in, in general, um, if you have compounds for which you have a better idea up front, if they're going to be active, also active in humans, um, and if they're not going to be toxic, and if they are staying in the body of uh, the patient long enough, then you can do much smaller clinical trials. You can expose fewer people uh, before you have uh, a molecule that can be brought to market.